right, I'm here with some of the program managers from virtualization. So uh, if you guys could just we'll go around here and 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 do uh, some introductions. So <laughs> yeah, that's all right. You get first. Yeah, I'm Ben Armstrong, program manager on Hyper-B. Okay, and do you want to tell what areas kind of your a, a plethora of areas. Okay. Okay. <laughs> all right. All right. So I will just start that he doesn't do. I'm John Howard. I'm program manager for Hyper-B in devices mainly. Um, so, uh, okay. I'm program manager in Hyper-V also. My team, we uh, focus more on uh, programs and future directions. Cool. All righty, so uh, one of the first things I guess we'll just kind of start off with is, a, is a, if somebody could just give a basic, here's our, here's our, here's our architecture of, of what Hyper-V is, uh, and then we can go from there. Okay, so cool. Hyper-V is a virtualization platform in Windows Server 2008, and it's a hypervisor-based hyper architecture. So the name kind of gives that. It does kind of get that way, you got very observant there. <laughs> so, essentially what we do is have the concept of partitions in Hyper-B. And partitions are effectively maintained at the bottom layer by a hypervisor. Hypervisor is a very thin layer, that's really what runs on the physical computer itself. How thin is it? Very thin. Um, Less than one megabyte in size? Oh, definitely. Oh yeah, I'm not sure the exact number, but it's <laughs> Way less than one megabyte. <laughs> Last I, I might, heard it was around 150k. Something, something like that. I haven't got the exact figure. Okay. Whatever. So we have two types of partition. One is a trusted partition, which is the operating system instance that's installed when you first uh, install a physical computer. So this will be a typical Windows Server 2008 operating system that's got Hyper-V enabled in it. When you enable the role and the hypervisor is launched, this now becomes, from the context of the hypervisor, a partition. Okay. And any virtual machine is also a partition, but it's less privileged. So we tend to call them a parent partition and a child partition. Hopefully the name parent and child makes it obvious that the parent is the parent of any child operating systems that run in partitions. There's only one parent partition that's more privileged, it has privileges through the hypervisor to be able to create additional partitions. And then typically when we draw the architecture, we split into the user mode, kernel mode. That's because we're nerds. No, it actually has some, some value as well. <laughs> so what does Hyper-V really do? So we have a number of components. We have some components that sit up in in user mode in the uh, in the parent partition, and we have some some bits that sit down in the kernel. The purpose of all the goo that sits in the parent partition really is to do the virtualization aspects necessary to support the child running as a uh, operating system instance. So that means, for example, doing device I.O. on behalf of the child partition. So if we want to write to a disk, it's not the child that's actually writing to disk, we're doing all the disk activity from the parent partition itself. So typically, if just Put storage as a, a very simple example. Suppose you've got a, a disk out here, and on that disk there's a, a VHD file or a virtual hard disk, which is the backing storage for the disk that the, the child sees. We have the typical Windows storage stack sitting in the child partition. This is a let's assume this is a Windows Server 2008 partition. There's a child partition, and some request comes down onto the storage stack either from kernel mode or from an application sitting up here saying I want to write something to my disk. We have a driver at the bottom of the stack down here and its purpose is to get that information across into the, the parent partition. And then from the parent partition we'll go through the other Windows storage stack, the native one that's sitting in here, and we'll talk down to the file system and specific file down here. So that's it in a nutshell. And if I rub some of these bits out and make it a little bit clearer as some of the components that we have, typically what you'll see is this referred to as a VSP. This will be referred to as a VSC. What do those stand for? It's a good question. Yeah, this is <laughs> There's a, a, a huge debate we had over <laughs> what the C stands for over here. So. I think we ended up on client, didn't we? Virtualization yes. service client. Yes. Yeah. And virtualization service provider. Which is mismatching. It's completely mismatching because you could think of provider and consumer, but we have definitely decided on client for the moment. <laughs> okay. 
That's the, the correct terminology should be server and client or provider and consumer, consumer, but yeah. You kind of got messed up somewhere along the line. Okay. That's long since lost in history. And so the other component that's missing out of this is how you get from data from the VSC across to the VSP. And that's uh, another layer we have down here, VM bus. Virtual machine bus is basically, in, in a nutshell, is a means to be able to very efficiently get data across from a child to a parent or vice versa. That, that's it in a nutshell. I mean, also, it, it could be equated to any other kind of bus, whether it be PCI bus, USB bus, but it's 100% in memory. It's not physical, oh, yeah. it's and not it's specifically physical. for virtualization. Yeah, I like to give the ever so descriptive uh, answer that VM bus is a bus for virtual machines. There you go. That's pretty, that's, that, uh, that pretty much it. You can name the VM bus. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Okay. VM bus does other things as well. So, for example, it will offer... Uh, channels across to the child partition so it can recognize the devices that are being offered to it and that kind of thing. But uh, when, when the virtual machine is running, its primary job is to get data backwards and forwards across that in a very fast I.O. path. So, so from security perspective, do all child partitions use the same VM bus? No, they don't. Are they no, isolated? Di different channels are wrong. Kind of, I led them yeah. into that one. Yeah. I'm yeah. sure you did, but yeah, clearly it's... Uh, security from an isolation perspective. Isolation is critical to the architecture of my So they're separate channels, so each each child has a separate VM bus channel back yes. to the parent? Exactly. Okay. They don't share, they're not aware of each other. Okay. All right. So we've got, you know, hits the, the disk right, hits the VSC, goes across the VM bus to hit the VSP, and then does it touch the hypervisor, just go straight to to the physical he goes hardware? Straight, actually straight through. Straight yeah, through actually, the physical yeah. hardware? Okay. It doesn't touch the hypervisor. I'll draw, diagram, so I'll, I'll draw my diagram like that. It's kind of around. Okay, so so, yeah, so what? Yeah, go ahead. It, here's a good question. How does this look different if you're using a pass-through disk? I knew you would ask that. What a great question. Exactly. <laughs> I wipe out PhD. There you go. Oh wow. <laughs> so <clears throat> we have a number of different storage uh, means that we can use to connect storage to um, a, the trial partition. So as Ben has alluded to, we have uh, pass-through disks. Which we don't actually use that term anywhere in the user interface. We don't at all. What do we actually call it? We, we just say a sign. It's just a disk, isn't it? Physical disk, I think we call it. Uh, we have VHDs. So pass through is, as Ben said, it's a physical disk. And so whether that's a, a LUM presented from a SAN that's or accessible from the, the parent partition, just or it's a locally attached storage. Not volume, it has to be a, phys whole a disk. physical disk. Whole, not, whole, whole disk. not volume on a disk. Uh, we have the virtual hard disk, and there's various types of virtual hard disk. I can drill into that if you're interested in that. And then you connect, can connect through iSCSI. There's another means as well. And there's, there's two kind of ways you can connect iSCSI. Okay. So so out of those those three, I mean, when when would you want to use each each different one? I mean, what's... So let me talk a little bit about VHDs first, and then mm -hmm. I'll, I'll come back to answering that question, mm -hmm. exactly the types of VHDs. So there's, there's three types. There is the, um, the fixed. Dynamic and differencing. So a fixed disk is as it implies. So a, a VHD at the end of the day is just a file that sits on the on some backing store somewhere. That's all it is. It's a file. A fixed disk, as it implies, is a fixed size. So if you create a fixed disk of one gig, it takes one gig of physical storage to actually store that file. So if you even if you only have 250, you know, k of data inside, being that you set it up front, it will take that full amount that you yeah. initially uh, created it with on the disk, even though it may be mostly empty. So, the second type, the dynamically expanding hard disk, is you, the the VHD format is freely uh, licensable. So, correct terminology. So, we're the OSP, the o Open Specification, specification Promise. promise. Yeah which means that the way we've constructed it, the header, the footer, all the way that the data is laid out within is clearly documented in a specification document that's available to all customers out on the web. So we don't hide anything under the covers. Typically, a, a, a differencing, sorry, a dynamically expanding hard disk, if you create a one gig dynamically expanding hard disk, I don't know what the actual number is, it comes out probably, I don't know, like 20 